Okay, let's look at countdown one week. Number one says the octagon below has eight sides that are equal in length. How many lines of symmetry does this figure have? Draw them. So lines of symmetry make the perfect um, mirror images where we cut the object, right? So we could do one right down the middle. We could do that again from the side and we can actually do that on each side, okay? But we can also go corner to the opposite corner for each one. And if I count then, I have, if I start at the top, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not counting that one, that one I've already counted. So I have eight lines of symmetry. And I'm going to write eight lines of symmetry. Then it says how many equal size triangles do the lines of symmetry form? Well, these would be equal triangles. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen triangles. Okay. So if I have a regular pentagon or regular octagon in this case, eight equal sides, eight lines of symmetry. Okay. Number four or number two says match the numbers on the left to their factors on the right. Remember, factors are my multiplication facts. Something times something would give me the number, right? Or the product. Okay. So here's my product. What times what gives me a 40? Well, 8 times 5 equals 40. So those two match. Okay. What's 12 times 6? Let's solve it. 12 times 6. 2 times 6 is 12. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 1 is 7. That is 72. Okay. 14 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Regroup. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. 14 times 3 is 42. And 14 times 4, let's check it. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. That would be 56. So 14 times 4 is 56. And I should see your work written down for those problems. Okay, the only one that was really a basic fact was 8 times 5. Backside. What multiplication problem is represented by this diagram? Fill in the missing numbers. Write the product. Notice we have the area model, but we have the inside filled in. Sorry about that. The inside is filled in. Notice we put 30 to both of these. 30 times 40, 30 times 6. So we distributed 30 across. So that means this one needs to be 30. Here we distributed 4 across. So this one will be 4. Here we brought 40 down to both. And here we brought 6 down. So this is really, then we're writing the product. So this would really be, the multiplication problem would be 34 times 46. Okay. And that would be 3 times 4 is 12. Tack on my two zeros, 1,200. 3 times 6 is 18. Tack on one zero for 180. 4 times 4 is 16. Tack on one zero for 160. And 4 times 6 is 24. If I add those together, I'm going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4. Oops, sorry, this went blurry on me. I apologize. That would be 4. 0 plus 8 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 2 is 16. 1 plus 2 is 3, 4, 5, and 1. That would be 1,564. You may have also solved it like this, 34 times 46. I'm going to just do it both ways, the turtle head. 4 times 6 is 24, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20, drop your 0, right, color, band-aid, egg, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13, add them together, 
and I get the same thing, okay? Then number four, which of the following can have two obtuse angles? Select all that apply. Well, we have a triangle. A triangle, can it ever have two obtuse? No, it could have one obtuse, but not two. Can't be that one. How about a rhombus? Remember, an obtuse is greater than 90, right? It's greater than 90, so it's a big angle. A rhombus. Rhombus is like this. That one could be obtuse, and so could that one. So a rhombus would work. How about a rectangle? No, rectangles always have 90, so nothing is obtuse. How about a trapezoid? Trapezoid could be like this. That could be obtuse, bigger than 90, and so could that one. So that works. A parallelogram is like a rhombus, but the sides don't have to be equal. So those could both be obtuse. And a square is like a rectangle, right, where they all need to be 90, so that can't work. So it would be rhombus, trapezoid, parallelogram. How about number five? It says angles A and B combine to form a right angle. So together they make that right angle, which is 90 degrees. The angle measure of A is less than 40. So this is less than 40. And that... Um, or so A is 40 less than the angle of B. I'm sorry. So A is less than 40 degrees less than the measure of angle B. What are the measures of the two angles? Use the guess and check method. Well, A plus B, so we have A, we have B, and we have A plus B. So A plus B has to be 90. So no matter what we guess and check, those always have to be 90. Okay, A is 40 less. So if A is 10, B is 80. That would give me 90 degrees, right? A plus B is 90. But is A 40 less than B? Well, it's 70 less, right? They tell us, no, it's 70 less. So that one, it could work, right? But it tells us that it is exactly it tells us that it is exactly 40 less. So here they do 40 plus 50 is 90. Okay, they tried 40 and they tried 50, but is, is A 40 degrees less than B? No. So that one can't work, right? Okay, so let's go back and let's try 20. 20 plus something is 90. Well, 20 plus 70 is 90, but that's 70, take away 20 is 50, so that one can't work, okay? How about um, 30? Could we try 30? 30 plus something is 90. 60, oh, okay, that gets me 90, but 60 minus 30 is 30. Oh, so that can't work. So I'm above it and I'm below it. Let's go in the middle. Could I try the halfway point? 25 plus something to get 90. Well, 25 plus 65 would get me 90, right? So is 65 minus 25 equal to 40? Ooh, yes. So angle A has to be 25 degrees, and angle B is 65 degrees. So 25 degrees, 65 degrees. And the difference between them is 40, and the total is 90. So that one works.